Okay, we're going to continue our discussion of increasing, decreasing functions in the first derivative test. Um, so we're just going to look at a couple of problems from your homework and a couple of problems that will be on the homework due for Monday, kind of get you started in the right direction. So I'm going to be in your book on page 186, and right now I'm going to discuss setting up number 13, uh, probably 57, uh, 62, 66, 73, and I'll just discuss those problems and everyone can work on their homework. All right, let's start with number 13. So again, on page 186 in your book, number 13. All right. Get some of that glare out of there. All right, number 13. So here we have this function. And I can't use any of my rules because it's not in the correct form, so change it to a fractional exponent. And now let's take the derivative, and I'm going to have to use that product rule first. Times the derivative of the second, plus second, times the derivative of the first. So here we go, x times, using the chain rule, and times negative 2x. Don't forget your signs, your algebra, plus second times the derivative of the first. All right, so now since we're going to be finding critical values, to find critical values, the first derivative has got to be equal to zero, and you solve. So if we're going to solve, remember, you're going to be using the zero product property. Well, to use the zero product property, you have to factor. So that's the goal right now. We want to factor this expression. All right, so here is what I have so far. And my common term looks like it's just 16 minus x squared to the negative 1 half. Okay, so I'm going to factor out a 16 minus x squared to the negative 1 half. That means I'm left with on the inside. I'm going to put that plus sign in the middle to remind me there's two terms. So that leaves me with the 2's drop out, and that gives me negative x squared. 1 half minus 1 half. 1 half minus negative 1 half makes 1. So this is 16 minus x squared to the first power. I'll just drop out those parentheses since I'm doing algebra. So in simplest form, this is 16 minus 2x squared over 16 minus x squared to the 1 half. All right. So we're going to take each piece and set it equal to 0 because we've got to find where the first derivative is equal to 0, which would be this solving this part of the, the um, fraction. And we have to find out where the first derivative is undefined. So that's also the, the part of the conversation. All right, so here we go. So I like just using the zero product property. So I'm going to take this out, and I'll show you why I prefer this shortly, especially when we start um, making our sign graphs. So notice I'm going to factor, because I need factors to make a sign graph. And then I'm going to say x equals square root of 8 and x equals negative square root of 8. I can simplify that radical later. I don't have to do it right this second. Let's solve the denominator. So 16 minus x squared to the 1 half equals 0. I'm going to square both sides, get rid of that radical. 16 minus x squared equals 0. So 4 minus x, 4 plus x. So x equals 4, x equals negative 4. So my critical values are going to be, all right, well, now, wait a minute. For this parabola to exist, it can only exist between 4 and negative 4. Um, one other component of this problem I forgot to write down is, nope, nope, I, I have to determine that from this information right here. So um, because this is a parabola that turns down, I know it doesn't exist at 4 and negative 4. I'll make the denominator 0. Therefore, the domain 
for this derivative, or excuse me, for this function is between negative 4 and 4. It doesn't exist at 4, negative 4, and it can only take values between theirs, otherwise it'll make the denominator undefined. Values bigger than 16 will make a negative, can't take the square root of a negative. Okay, so here's my sign chart. I'm going to be using from 4 minus x, 4 plus x, because it can, it can exist between those two, square root of 8 minus x, square root of 8 plus x. So notice I've kept all my factors and their signs just as it's been, just as I, I factored it. There's a lot of algebra in this question. Be prepared for that. The zero for the top one is 4, negative 4, put a little zero in there, so you know it's where specifically this, this denominator is undefined. It can't be defined there. Those are open dots. Okay, and that's where the derivative is undefined, but they are critical values. Um, that's why I'm going ha to have to be between those two for this denominator to exist. Okay, so also square root of 8. Well, square root of 8 is a little, it's, it's bigger than the square root of 4, but smaller than the square root of 9, so it's between um, 2 and 3. So the 0 for this one is, let's just put him a little bit in that region. So he's in the domain. So on the bottom line, we have negative 4, negative square root of 8, square root of 8, and positive 4. All right, here we go. Let's work on the signs. So since my sign, my neg is in front of my x, all my signs are going to be flipped for this one. This one really won't matter, negative, positives. But we know it doesn't exist past those points, so we're not going to be considering this, these regions. All right. So for this one, my signs are flipped because the neg is in front of the x, then positives, and negatives and positives. All right. But... On my sign graph, I'm only going to consider these signs. I'm not going to consider the outer portions. All right, so starting here, okay, so um, I'm going to be multiplying positive times a positive times a positive and a negative. Then I'm going to be multiplying positive times positive times positive times positive. Then these are positive times positive, negative, so that's negative here. So I am increasing from negative square root of 8 to square root of 8, decreasing. I'm going to let you finish the rest of the problem. I'm running out of space. But this gets you started on number 13. All right, next we're going to move to 57. So 57. All right, so 57 says the graph of f is shown in the figure. Sketch a graph of derivative of f. All right, so this is the graph of f, and I'm just going to give a basic sketch of it. Now remember, the graph of the derivative is a, a graph that's based on the slopes of f. So I've got to determine where the slopes are positive and where the slopes are negative. All right, so it would help if I have a different color. But I don't have one right this second. So let's look at the slopes. If I drew tangent lines along this part of the curve, my tangent lines will all have a negative slope all the way up to 2. Then at 2, my tangent line is going to be horizontal. Then on the other side of 2, my tangent lines change to a positive. So if I want to sketch the graph of the derivative, at 2, my slope is 0. But to the left of 2, all my slopes are negative, and then on the right of 2, all my slopes are positive. All right, so you have another one of those for your homework. Let's move to 62. All right, this time they give me the graph of the derivative. And this is at 1. Okay, so this is f prime, and I've got to sketch the graph of f. All right. That says, um, 
Identify the intervals when f is increasing or decreasing. Estimate the values of f as a relative max or min. So I don't have to sketch the graph. I can just do where it's increasing or decreasing. So I really want to do a number line. So on my number line, I'm going, my critical value has to be at 1. That's where the graph changes from a positive to a negative. So it's positive value to a negative value. Then I have a relative max at x equals 1. And then my function is increasing from negative infinity to 1 and then decreasing from 1 to infinity. All right. Next, I want to look at number 66. Okay. So it says, it gives you some information in the problem. You'll have to read that. I'm not going to write it all out. And it says, Supply the appropriate inequality for the indicated value of C. And it wants to determine if G prime of negative 5, how it relates to 0. So I've got to find the derivative of this function. So let's take the derivative. Now, if I'm going to take the derivative of this, this is just a coefficient. So this is 3 times F prime of X. And the derivative of a constant is just 0. All right. So let's see what information they give us. I want the derivative. I want to know about negative 5 on the f function, which they give you in a chart. Well, negative 5 is in the region from negative infinity to negative 4. All right, so um, since from negative 5 to negative, me, negative infinity to negative 4, the first derivative is positive, and I got 3 times a positive value. Well, then that's going to be a positive number. So g prime of negative 5 is going to be greater than 0. A little bit of some analysis type problems. Let's move to 73. All right. They give you a chart. And they say the function f is differentiable on the interval from negative 1 to 1. So differential means it's continuous. And that's good to know. That means there's not any asymptotes or holes. The table shows the values for the, for, for the first derivative for selected values of x. Sketch a graph of f, approximate the critical numbers, and identify the relative extrema. All right, so again, let's make a sign chart before we sketch the function. All right, now look at your table in your book, and you're going to see the first derivative. It starts at negative 1. Okay, so we have some negative values. And then we have 0, and then we go all the way up to 1. But the first derivative is negative up to between negative 0.5 and negative 0.25. And at negative 0.25, I'm positive. So I'm negative all the way up there. So somewhere in here, there must be a, a critical value. It's got to change to 0 somewhere between negative 0.5 and point, negative 0.25 because my, my derivative changes from negative to a positive. Then, looking at it all again, uh, between 0.25, positive 0.25 and positive 0.5, I'm all positive, and then all of a sudden at 0.5, I'm negative. Remember, I'm continuous, so there must be a critical value somewhere in here. That means that my slope has to equal zero somewhere in there. All right. So between negative 1 and negative 0.5, I have a, I have a, my function is decreasing. I get a, a zero slope. That means it has to have a, a, a relative max or min. I, can, I know which one it is just by the signs. A negative to a positive means it's a relative min. A positive to a negative means it's a relative max. All right, so my slopes are negative, then zero, so... Negative 0 0.5, 0 0.5, negative 0.25. It's going to come down. It's going to get a slope of zero. It's going back up. All right. And then my, my, I'm coming back toward 0 0.25. Slopes are still positive, but at, point, at po positive 0.5, my slopes are negative. So I have to go um, across the x-axis right there. Or excuse me, um, my slopes are positive. I had a little bit in the wrong region. Sorry, I apologize. It means right in here, so don't pay attention to that. Okay, my slopes are zero, and then my slopes turn over and, be, and are negative, and they continue all the way to one. 
So sorry, I put my max too soon. My max had to go between 0.25 and 0.5. There's my slope of zero. All right, so your homework's listed on your assignment calendar and finish that up for Monday.